It's been a few weeks later since I've built this slamming table and now I finally have the time to build a minor gauge or cross cut jig for this thing. So the idea is that I'll use this piece of MDF as a base to mount everything on. Have the aluminium as a fence since the aluminium guarantees that it's a 90 degrees. Um, and to align it in the uh, motor track, I'm going to use this piece of UMHW, cut the size to fit into here precisely, and then to lock it down onto the motor track, I'm going to cut another piece of metal to fit in the T slots of the motor track, and then use a bolt like so to screw it down every time. It all doesn't really make much sense now, but the design is really quite simple. Here I'm cutting a bit of precious UHMW plastic to fit in the motor track. I feel safer doing the fine tuning with a hand plane. Since the plastic is actually quite flexible, I'm going to make a dado in the base for it to fit on. Well, we've got a problem here. These countersink screws seem to expand the plastic quite a bit. So I'm going to try and change it out to these pinhead screws and hopefully that will solve the problem. It's a bit better. Yeah, about it. Now the metal clip to clamp it into the motor track. The piece of metal is a bit too wide, so I'm sending it down a bit. Now for the fence, I'm going to be using this aluminium extrusion and I have already cut it to a size, including the 45 degrees. And that is so that the uh, saw blade doesn't actually hit the fence when I'm cutting at 45 degrees. I have cut it to length such that I can actually swap the entire crosscut jig around without changing the position of the uh, aluminium fence. At least that's the idea. To make the fence adjustable, I am enlarging one of the holes slightly. Then I can fit the T nut into the base. Now, since I have actually dadoed the piece of plastic into the wood, it actually sticks out above the surface. So I'll have to trim that down. I've also found an actual knob to fit on the uh, metal clip so that I don't actually need to make one myself. Next is the uh, sacrificial fence. And as you can see, there's some pretty crazy artwork on the back, but that doesn't really matter since it's just gonna get cut up. And to mount it on, I'm going to make some slots on the fence here and here to allow bolts to come through. To make the holes into slots, I'm just tilting my drill bit back and forth. Then I can use a file to smooth it out. So about halfway I think would be good. On the left hand side of the fence, the wing nut actually hits the base when I pull it to the rightmost position. So I'm going to use a chisel to attempt to chisel away some wood to make space for the wing nut. Well, 
at this point it is pretty much finished. I just need to adjust it to be square with my blade. I am obviously going to use the five cut rule to square the fence up, but uh, to give us a head start, I'll just use the fence and a framing square and then adjust the minor fence until the framing square shows that it is square. Now the five cut method, which I am sure most of you will be very familiar with, it basically provides an indication of how square your minor fence is by magnifying any error present five times. To help me with identifying which way to move the fence, I drew a little diagram. Now we just got this back from the saw and it is quite obvious that we've got a case 2 situation according to our diagram where uh, this side is thicker than the other side and we can even double check with the calipers 4.8 and what is 2.8 so about 2 mil in difference and we have to keep in mind that we enlarge the angle by 5 times so we have to divide that distance by 5 so that leaves us with about 0.4 of a difference now we have to see how much we need to move the fence by and I could have used similar triangles for this but it's just easier to just measure it out so about 1 mil in difference that means that I need to move it back by 0.2 now the second test cut Let's see how we went this time. So 3.96 and 4.16. So about so a difference of 0.2 dividing that by 5 leaves us with 0.04 millimeters across about 800 mil. Yeah. That might not be good enough. Now I'm just kidding. Like of course yeah, it's good enough, especially for, for what I'm going to be using it for. Um, unless I'm going to be making rockets with this. I actually did not expect that to go so well because, uh, yeah, the sliding table is wood and there's quite a bit of flex. Speaking of flex in the sliding table, it is obviously still there if I push on the side. However, after adding the minor gauge to it, I actually found that it has lessened quite a bit because the part that touches the sliding table actually helps stabilize it. For now, I'm just glad that I can finally ditch this really heavy crosscut sled and instead just stick to using a very, very compact one that I can just hang on the wall. 